Captain Leander leaned into the helmsman's chair, her other hand resting comfortably on her hip, eyes gazing out into the darkness of space when she asked, So, what am I looking at? It sat utterly still out there, among the void, idling like a perished fish, awkwardly tilted to one side, neutrally buoyant. It was larger than them, older. A derelict, Corbin the pilot told her. A hissing coursed over the comms. How long have they been broadcasting this distress signal? She asked. Can't be certain, Corbin answered with a shrug, bringing them in close. We've been picking it up for at least twelve hours now. Up close, the ship looked like a corpse. Its outside was blighted and bronzed, an oxidized hull in the void of space. It didn't fit. The broadcast is just a repeated SOS signal, Corbin explained as the captain moved closer to the forward window. I have no idea what it's about. How many life signs are you reading? She asked, resting her arm on the bulkhead. She could read the faint letters that sat across the forsaken ship's port side. The Kraken. Just one, Corbin said, shaking his head. At least it's not a ghost ship. Captain Leander frowned. Might as well be. That looks only barely like an LV-42 Frider. Small, but it'll only safely run with a crew of maybe 20 souls. Something is wrong. You're telling me, Corbin said, preparing to circle the quiet ship. Missing, what, 19 people? That doesn't make me feel terribly good about the one that's left. So, what are we going to do? She backed away from the bulkhead and placed a hand on Corbin's shoulder. Get the others up. Dock us to that ship and find the survivor. If survivor is the appropriate term, he corrected. That's why we're waking the rest of the crew. She said with a smirk. Need more eyes. I get to stay here though, right? Corbin asked, only half joking. Just do it. Captain Leander ordered. And he did. Within minutes, they were docked on one of the derelict's airlocks. With a sharp, serpentine hiss, the lock opened, and four crew members of the salvage ship Eleanor stepped onto the deck of the Kraken. The deck was, as expected, empty and dark. Lights in the metal corridors flickered dimly, sputtering, trying to stay lit. The captain ordered, All right, like we discussed, Tyrone, you're with me. We're going to make our way to the bridge. See if we can figure out what happened here. Freya and Rear, you girls are going to search the decks, the life pods, everywhere. There is one soul left on this boat, and good or bad, we're going to get them off. Understood? Rear knocked on her own helmet. Yeah, we got it. Can we take these off now? Says the air is clear. Mine's fogging up a storm. I don't care. Captain Leander said. You good, Freya? Freya nodded holding her rifle tight against her shoulder. Yeah. She said, staring down the dark corridors. Doesn't mean I like it, though. Rear pulled her helmet off and took one awful breath. Gagging, she wasted no time putting the bulky helmet back on her head. Damn. She said, panting. What was it? Asked the captain. What's wrong? Rear hunched herself, hands on her knees, audibly praying to not vomit in her helmet. It stinks. She said in pained breaths. Fucking smells like death in here. Like the back of a slaughterhouse. Probably just Tyrone. Freya said playfully. Captain Leander scanned the floor. There was nothing there but rusted grates. Rusted, the captain thought. Like the outside of the hull. Fuck off, Tyrone said, not playfully. This is serious. I don't know what could be causing the smell, Captain Leander said, looking across all of them. But where there's a rotting stink, there's usually something doing the rotting. Hey, Freya said, scanning the bulkhead with her flashlight. You know, technically rust is what happens when metal rots. Rust doesn't smell like flesh, Rear said nervously, her face still frozen with disgust. The captain pointed down the corridor leading to the Kraken's bridge. Tyrone, she said, taking command. 
We still have a job to do. Care to take the lead? With pleasure, Captain. The hulking man said, bringing his gun to bear. Captain Leander followed him, walking backwards so she could say to the others. Keep comms open. See anything, holler. Stay tight. Working on it. Rear called. Don't get lost. The captain stood shoulder to shoulder with Tyron, her own pistol wrapped firmly under her fingers. The grates groaned beneath their weight. The way to the bridge blew up brightly on their huds. Corbin. Called Captain Leander. You there? Come in, Corbin. A voice grew in her ear. Got you, Captain. Been following along. It's like I'm right there with you. But not, Tyron said bitterly. Thanks for reminding me, Corbin said with an audible smile. Good news. The ship's doing a little bit better now, reading five life signs, not just one. You guys must be doing something good in there. Very funny, Corbin, the captain said, stone-faced. Can you pinpoint the other life form for us? Still weird, Corbin said, smacking his lips as he worked. I, um, I see four. You guys heading towards the bridge, and Rhea and Freya back approaching the main staff quarters, I assume. But nothing. Just four red dots, nothing else in the entire ship. Probably just a glitch, Tyron mumbled, eyes scanning all around them, checking every metal in wire crevice. Probably, Corbin said. But good luck anyways. You guys are about twenty yards from the bridge. Wasn't hard to find. Pretty straight shot. Focus on Rare and Freya. They have the hard job. The captain said. All right, I'll leave you guys alone for a bit then. Peace. And then they were left in the narrow, silent hallway with only each other and a peeling iron door. How is this ship rusting? The captain asked. Ships can't rust. I'm not sure, Tyron said, leaning in close to the wall. He scraped it with his finger, brushing pieces of metal onto the floor. The ship's brittle. Very brittle. I'm surprised we didn't damage it by just looking at it. There was a short, unstable flight of stairs that brought them to the bridge. The captain let Tyron take the lead, watching with careful eyes the path they'd just taken. There was a whistling in the pipes, like steam. The hall was still empty. Tyron had no issues getting the door open. Its locks had rusted and were easy to break open. Little black and red-orange pieces crumbled like dirt, scattering in the stagnant air. The door creaked open, and the two made their way inside. Five seconds later, they were entirely confused. Where is everything? Tyron asked. There's nothing here. Bridge was empty. There were no panels, no computers, no pilot's chair or navigation module. There wasn't even a forward hole window. Just an empty black room. Corbin? Captain Leander called. You need to check the schematics you found. This can't be- No. Tyron interrupted, placing a hand on her shoulder, leaning his head in as he whispered. This is the bridge, all right. Make no mistakes, we're here. Then where is everything? She asked in response. You can't drive a ship out this far into space without a damn steering wheel. Perhaps it was stripped, Tyron suggested. You make no mistake. The captain returned, showing him the perfectly graded floor. There was never anything here. If it was stripped, we would still see where the panels and stations were plugged in. But we can't. There was never a bridge on this ship. Just then, the voice of Freya came over the comms. Captain? She asked. We made it to the engine rooms and- She hesitated. No, the captain thought, already making for the door. She knew exactly what they were going to say. I don't know how to say this, Captain, but there's nothing here. The captain was already moving down the stairs, hastily moving towards the engine room. She started to call Tyrone, but he was at her side. The engine room has no engine. It's just a shell. Freya! The captain ordered, now running down the corridor. Get back to the airlock now! Ma'am? Freya asked, confused. Corbin came across too, asking, Captain, what's going on? Just go! Captain Leander barked. Corbin, keep your eyes on the damn radar! She wasn't confused. She knew exactly what this meant. 
It was a hollow ship, inoperable, unflyable, dead with a distress beacon playing anyways. She didn't know who or why, but she understood a simple truth. The ship was a trap. They'd taken the bait. Captain, Tyrone said, overtaking her slightly so he could turn and meet her eyes. What's happening? Someone set us up. She huffed. I've heard of pirates using scuttled ships before to lure in salvagers and rescuers. Easy to catch you when you've boarded a lifeless hunk. But, Tyron said confused. You said it yourself. The ship was never capable of flying, period. How did it get here? They must have towed it. The captain mumbled. It doesn't matter. We need... Oh, shit! They had reached the airlock, but Freya and Rear were nowhere to be found. Captain called for them on the comms. Where are you guys? We're at the airlock. Hurry up! There was nothing but a palpable tension, the ear-splitting sound of raised, patient guns. Tyron took a deep breath. Come in! The captain repeated, holding it together, holding strong. But still, nothing came out of the dark hall. There was a faint buzz. Captain? Corbin. The captain asked, hushedly. What's happening? I can't raise them either, Captain. He said apologetically. Do we have incoming? She asked. No, Corbin said quickly. We're still alone out here. Why do you ask? She couldn't help but feel some partial relief. Because this ship is a trap, Corbin. She said, steadily inching forward. And I wasn't sure if it would be sprung from the outside or the inside. Tyron and the captain worked their way through the ship's failing innards, attempting to hail Rear and Freya the whole time. Damn it! cursed the captain as they entered the engine room. There was nothing there as they were told. Unfortunately, the persons who had told them as such were also missing. Captain, Corbin said, returning to the comms. His voice was weak, shaky. The captain didn't like it. Corbin was never nervous without reason. Yes, Corbin. She asked in a whisper. I'm only getting three life signs now. What? She asked. Stunned. Check it again. I have. Corbin snapped. I've rechecked and rechecked. I can't find them. They're missing, Captain. I don't... We'll keep looking, Tyrone said, moving back into the hall. Captain Leander didn't follow him right away. She stood, staring at the open, black room with hopeless eyes. It doesn't make any sense, she thought. One person shouldn't have been able to get the drop on Rear and Freya. They couldn't. There was a violent clang that shook the air. Spinning around, the captain moved into the hallway, calling Tyron's name. When she got there, she only found his gun, resting on the rusty grates. Tyrone! She called into the dark passageways. Swooping down, she picked up his rifle on the go and chased an unseen enemy down the hall. There's nothing, Captain, Corbin said, following her through the halls on his computer. You're the only one I still register. You and and whatever was there before. His words seemed to trail off as Captain Leander, refusing to accept that her crew, her friends, were gone, continued to rush down the hall. Please, Captain, Corbin begged. Please, turn around. We don't know what's in there. But the captain didn't listen. She followed the twisting, narrowing hallways as far as she could. They led her straight to a large open chamber. A cargo bay of sorts. An empty cargo bay. Whoever had taken Tyron from her, whatever, was strong. Tyron was a huge man. No one could have done it alone. Not like that. It was impossible. Spinning, she shined her flashlight to the corners of each and every wall as she desperately searched for Freya, for Rear, and for Tyron. Where are you? She called desperately. Then, after a moment of quiet panic, static came back over the radio. Static that, after just a moment, erupted into screams in the captain's ears. Captain! Corbin screamed. Get out of there! I found the life form! I found it! It's the... His voice cut off, as the entire ship seemed to groan and strain. Flakes of black, like ash, fell from the rafters above. They landed on the captain's exosuit, and she stared at them. It was uneasy how similar they were to scabs. 
Then she understood. She'd been right about the trap, but so wrong about everything else. There was a pressure around her ankle. Oh my god, she thought. The one life form. The ship. A metal, rotten hand gripped the captain's ankle, and in a swift motion the grates parted like jagged teeth. The hand pulled down, and the living ship swallowed her whole. Outside, a creeping, rotting rust slowly spread across the airlock of the Kraken and seeped into the body of the Eleanor. The distress signal continued to beep.